Well, winters in Vermont are, are long. I've lived here for more than half my life and I'm still not used to it. You know, there's snow on the ground for six months of the year. And we sort of huddle up towards the end, you know? It's just that magical transition time of, uh, of re rebirth and, and coming out with sugar, right? This is the experience that I love to share. This is why I do what I do is to share that essential experience. Start my day by checking the weather, checking my emails, having some coffee. We will gather the sap, bring it back in the truck. All right, so these are some nice antique buckets that have inherited from generations of sugar makers here in Landgrove. Some of these are from the 1920s, um, which is really sort of a really cool thing about using some of this older equipment. Combine that with some modern technology. We're gonna go hang some buckets. So here we are. This is a, a really special piece of of land that's near our house, near our relative's house. It's been part of land growth family tradition for a long time. But basically at the end of winter, this tree has stored some energy in the form of carbohydrates in its roots. And that's like a really simple sugar that comes up the tree on warm days. And then it freezes inside the tree and comes down the tree um, on the next warm day. So the sap is flowing in two directions and we capture just a little bit of that. So I'm gonna drill that hole. I'm gonna drill about an inch into the, the outer white wood of this tree, the sap wood. People imagine something thick like pine sap and they think of maple syrup, but maple sap is very much like water. It's only about 2% sugar and the rest of it's water. One of my personal traditions when I tap a tree and I see the sap flow, I yell out, we got a runner! So you'll hear us on a tapping day, all the kids and me are just walking around like a bunch of lunatics shouting that. And then I always hug the tree, because I'm an old hippie, just to give back that, the love that this tree has given me. You know, a lot of maple syrup documentaries, you're not gonna see that kind of clownery, but it's what makes Sugar Bubs that sweet. It's not clownery either, it's respect. With my manly hammer, you'll see that sap's going to flow right out of there pretty soon. And then I can catch that. And that's just my magical Mother Nature's gift. And that's a pretty good flow right there. That's a brilliant little thing. Here's the sound of spring. If you can catch that ping, 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 we'll put a little lid on that bucket. So we're off and out in... Uh, the very end of February, hanging these buckets and putting our lines up. And then the sap will flow till about the second week of April. So it's about six weeks there. You know, that we start thigh deep in snow and snowshoes and we finish in our sneakers. It really is a transition time of year. The suns of early spring are mud on the roads, running water and skiers in tank tops. Shoots start to come up out of the ground. Even by the beginning of the sugary season, we'll start hearing the frogs. Tree frogs and peepers, the waking up of, of life after a long, hard winter. And the best part is, it's sugar that we're making. We're not harvesting potatoes or wine or grapes, it's sugar. That's what makes the magic happen. That's why I'm Sugar Bob. I became a full-time sugar maker by making maple products year-round out of the syrup that we harvest during this time of year. Come here, Tippy. Give me a kiss. But you know, I take a lot of these business accelerator courses and they make you focus on what problem do you solve? And I'm like, I'm not solving a problem. The problem isn't that people are hungry and they need syrup. The problem is people want to know where their food comes from. Okay, so these are some buckets that we tapped 
previously, the weather's been perfect. Let's find out what we have here. So this bucket's been running, the sap's been running into this bucket for, I don't know, 20 or 36 hours. This is our New England heritage sweetener, right? Doesn't come from away across the sea or from even the south. And this forest that we're standing in actually stretches from, from Maine to Michigan, right? And from Quebec all the way down to, you know, West Virginia, Virginia. Probably half of the northern tier of that forest is maple or maple related species. So it's like water, right? Not, not sticky, but there is sugar in it. It's just the best, best drink ever. When it's fresh out of a tree like that, full of minerals and that maple flavor. No one's ever been able to really say what makes it mapley flavor. Can't be duplicated though. No, sir. Tank holds about 325 gallons of sap. Looks like we're about halfway there right now. A boiling sap is my favorite part, down in the sugar house. See, that's when you're, you're taking this great sap and turning it into the syrup, right? And when the kids come and try the sap, they're like, oh, that's delicious. But when they come try the syrup, it's like, oh my goodness. So special. And then you never know who's gonna show up. People see the steam rising from the side of the road. We put a little sign out that says Sugar House is open and just people, will, you see a car come down, it could be your best friend or it could be a friend you only see during sugaring season. So that sort of chaos and mystery of who you're gonna see and what's gonna happen is, uh, is pretty special to me. Get the slab hot, get the bricks hot. Get the crowd hot, fired up. It's like, woof, woof. let's make some sugar. We'll keep going till dark, right? People will bring food, people will bring snacks. We'll be making syrup, filtering it, bottling it up. People will take some home. It's just, it's just gonna be the greatest time. love to connect people with the woods, their food, and each other. It's not, you know, I'm a big personality, what a sugar bob this, sugar bob that, but really I just want to be a facilitator for us getting together and being together, right? Our sugar house is open to everybody, all shapes and sizes, even all political parts of that spectrum. People just love to be part of the magic of getting the sugar and watching it turn into delicious products and cooking with them and sharing them and watching our success because our success drives everyone's success. I probably focus too much on the emotional parts of my business as opposed to the, the Excel spreadsheet parts of my business. You know, I care a lot about making a lot of syrup, but I care more about who I make it with. And I care a lot about my QuickBooks online accounting system, but I care more about the why I do the things that I do. And so the balance of those two is sort of the, 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 the thread that we knit together this life that we love. Oh boy, that was so cheesy. That's definitely not gonna go in the final cut. He likes to keep his fire engine clean. It's a clean machine. Do -do 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 -do. Sugar Bob and in the sugar house with his sugaring, he polishes the evaporator now. People like to come and go, but he says hello.
You know I can pull off my thumb. Now I'm gonna start telling dad jokes. Opening a world of possibilities and all natural sweeteners. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. Try to think of another dad joke. <laughs>